Topic 1. Introduction to the Financial Services Industry By the end of this topic you should have an understanding of intermediation and its role in the financial services industry. The role of the Bank of England. Mutual and proprietary organizations. Credit unions. The difference between retail and wholesale banking. Topic 1.1. Why do we need money? Before money the process of bartering was then adequate for exchanging goods and services with each other. However, as the world became more complex and the value of goods and services increased, it became impossible for people to match what they had to offer to what others could supply. What was needed was a separate commodity that people would accept in exchange for any product or service that would form a common denominator against which the value of product or service could be measured. Money now acts as a medium of exchange and in order for it to be effective it must be sufficient in quantity, acceptable to all parties in all transactions, divisible into small units so all transactions can take place, portable, acts as a store of value, meaning that £100 in cash today will still be £100 in a year's time although when considering money's efficacy to be used as a store value you must consider inflation. The financial services industry exists largely to facilitate the use of money. Commercial financial institutions seek to make a profit from providing services while others like not-for-profit organizations may prioritize other objectives, such as social value. Financial institutions offer products and services that provide convenience for holders to make and receive digital payments, a means of achieving otherwise difficult objectives such as mortgages and protection from risk providing insurance protections. Topic 1.2. What is intermediation? Intermediation is the process performed by banks where they borrows money from a surplus party that has more liquid funds at a low interest rate and lends it to a deficit party who need the extra funds now and willing to pay a higher interest on these funds in the future. An intermediary's profit margin is the difference between the two interest rates. Disintermediation Where lenders and borrowers interact directly. An example of this is when a company that is looking to raise funds to invest in a startup sets up a crowdfunding website to promote itself or product to find investors willing to lend money for rewards. The four elements of intermediation. There are four main reasons why both individuals and companies need the service of intermediaries and these relate to following factors. Geographic location physical location problem where lenders and borrowers would have to locate each other and may be restricted to own area or circle of contacts and not aware of others outside of that, but they may have easy access to branch of a high street bank. Aggregation. Not every potential borrower may have enough money available to satisfy the borrower's requirements. Intermediaries can overcome this size difference by aggregating small deposits. Maturity transformation. Borrower may need funds for a longer period of time than the lender is prepared to agree to. Intermediaries are able to overcome this mismatch by offering a wide range of deposit accounts to a wide range of depositors. Risk transformation. Due to risk of default or fraud, individual depositors are generally reluctant to lend all their savings to another individual or company. Intermediaries enable lenders to spread their risk over a variety of borrowers, so if there is a failure to pay the intermediary can absorb the loss. Risk management. Another way of risk transformation is through insurance in which an individual contributes to a fund through their insurance premiums that share the risk minimizing financial loss. Product sales intermediaries. This brings together the product providers and the potential customers. These include FAs, insurance brokers and mortgage advisors. Topic 1.3. Financial institutions. 
This is an introduction into some of the types of financial institutions that make up the financial services industry in the UK. This will be covered more in Unit 2. The Bank of England The Bank of England is the UK's central bank and acts as banker to the government in supervising the economy and regulating the supply of money. Its mission is to promote the good of the people in the United Kingdom by maintaining monetary and financial stability. In doing this it performs several important roles, its main functions being Issuer of banknotes Ensures that an adequate supply of notes is in circulation. Banker to the government. The Bank of England holds the government's own account and provides financial cover of any deficit by making automatic loans to the government, or if a surplus then the bank may lend out as part of general debt management. Banker to the banks. All major banks have an account with the Bank of England for depositing or obtaining cash and other transactions. This gives the Bank of England considerable influence by being able to change the rate of interest it charges to any banks that borrow affecting the money market. Advisor to the government. Since 1997 the Bank's Monetary Policy Committee, MPC, has had responsibility for setting interest rates. They meet eight times a year with a mandate in setting the base rate to ensure government inflation target is met. Foreign exchange market. Manages the UK's reserve of gold and foreign currencies on behalf of the Treasury. Lender of the last resort. Makes funds available when the banking system is short of liquidity to maintain confidence in the system. Maintaining economic stability. The Bank of England's Financial Policy Committee, FPC, is responsible for identifying and monitoring risk that could affect the economy. Previously the Bank of England was responsible for managing new issues of gilt-edged securities before this was transferred to him Treasury's Debt Management Office to avoid conflict of interest with the bank's responsibility for setting interest rates. Gilt-edged securities More commonly known as gilts and are loans to the government and are available in a wide range in issue offering loans at different rates of interests over different periods. Covered in more detail in Topic 6. The Bank of England's role as a regulator. Until 1998 the Bank of England held the responsibility for the supervision and regulation of the UK banking sector before it was transferred to the Financial Services Authority, FSA. The Financial Service Act 2012 that took effect from 1 April 2013 divided responsibility for the financial stability between the Treasury the Bank of England and the two new regulators in the Financial Conduct Authority, FCA, and the Prudential Regulation Authority, PRA. This act was then modified to the Financial Service Act 2016 and provided more powers to the bank by bringing the PRA within it establishing a new Prudential Regulation Committee, PRC. Regulated bodies covered more in Topic 17. Proprietary and mutual organizations. Proprietary organizations. This accounts for most of the large financial institutions and are limited companies that are owned by shareholders with the right to share the distribution of company profits in form of dividends. They can also contribute to decisions about how company is run by voting at shareholders' meetings. Mutual organizations. Not constituted as a company so does not answer to shareholders, and in effect is owned by its members, those who deposit, borrow or are policyholders, who can determine how company is managed through general meetings. Most common types of mutual organizations are building societies, friendly societies and credit unions. Demutualization Demutualization is allowing a building society to convert to a bank and its status changed to a public limited company, subject to approval of its members as part of the Building Societies Act 1986. Due to the windfall for the members on demutualization, building societies considering conversion placed restrictions on the opening of new accounts to protect their members from people opening a new account just to profit from subsequent allocation of shares known as carpet bagging. What is a credit union? 
A credit union is a mutual organization generally operating as an alternative to loan sharks, providing savings and reasonably priced short to medium term loans for the benefit of their members and supported by the government through a number of initiatives and enacted legislation to help widen the scope. They are authorized and regulated by the FCA and savers are protected through the Financial Services Compensation Scheme. In order to join, a credit union member must meet the membership requirements, pay any required entrance fee, buy at least one one pound share in the union. Credit unions can choose whether to offer ordinary shares which are paid up bringing all the benefits of a normal credit union membership or as deferred shares, which are only payable in special circumstances. In either case all members are equal regardless of the size of their shareholding. Credit unions are owned by its members and controlled through a voluntary board of directors, elected from current credit union members at the annual general meeting, AGM, though day-to-day -day running is usually carried out by employed staff. What products and services does a credit union offer? Credit unions offer savings and loan facilities to members. Savers. Savers invest cash in units of one pound, with each unit buying a share in the credit union and each share paying annual dividends of around 2 to 3 percent, with no maximum that was removed in 2012 with the changes to the Credit Union Act. These changes also allowed interest to be paid on savings instead of dividends, but those companies that wish to do this must have the necessary systems and controls in place and have at least £50,000 or 5% of total assets, whichever is greater, in reserve. Borrowers. Members' savings create a pool of money that can then be lent to other members with an interest rate of 1% to a maximum 3% of the reducing balance each month. A unique feature is that members' savings and loan balances are covered by life assurance. This means that any loan balance will be paid off on death and a lump sum equal to savings held will be paid subject to overall limits. Retail and wholesale banking. The main difference between retail and wholesale transactions is that of size with wholesale being generally the larger. Retail banking. These are banks that provide more general services to customers such as deposits, loans and payment systems. Acting as intermediaries between those that wish to borrow money and those that are prepared to deposit. The price for borrowing and reward for investing is the interest paid. Wholesale banking. This refers to the process banks providing funding for other financial institutions such as pension funds, government agencies, or larger corporate clients such as mortgage lenders and real estate developers. For example if a bank spots an opportunity to make a substantial profitable loan but does not have adequate deposits, it can raise money very quickly on the interbank market. Building societies are also permitted to raise funds on the wholesale markets but unlike banks they have a restriction of 50% of their liabilities with remainder coming from deposits. What is LIBOR and SONIA? London Interbank offered rate. LIBOR, was the benchmark rate of interest charged in the intermarket acting as a reference rate for most corporate lending. Rates were fixed daily and can vary in maturity from overnight to up to a year. LIBOR was calculated using information submitted by major London banks on the interest rates they are paying to borrow from other banks to assess the health of the financial system. LIBOR scandal In June 2012, a scandal ensued after it was revealed that some major banks had been manipulating the LIBOR for their own benefit. A review by Martin Wheatley, the FSA and FCA managing director, recommended that banks submitting rates to LIBOR must base them on actual interbank deposit transactions, and not on expectations of what rates should or are expected to be. It was also recommended that banks keep records of the transactions the rates relate to and that their LIBOR submissions are published. Criminal sanctions are recommended for any form of rate manipulation. The activity of administering and providing information to specified benchmarks became a FCA regulated activity from April 2013. Under the Financial Act 2012, knowingly making false or misleading statements in relation to LIBOR became a criminal offence. 
Responsibility for administrating LIBA passed to Intercontinental Exchange Benchmark Administration in 2014 from the British Bankers Association. In 2016, the EU developed a benchmarks regulation, which the UK retained post-Brexit and now forms the backbone of the UK's regulatory framework for benchmarks such as LIBA and SONIA. As a result of the LIBA scandal, a shift has been made to SONIA in 1997 and administered by the Bank of England since 2016 with calculation and publication responsibilities also passing to the bank following a reform of SONIA in 2018, Bank of England, 2021. It is based on actual transactions and reflects the average of the interest rates that banks pay to borrow sterling overnight from other financial institutions and other institutional investors. You have now come to the end of topic 1. Well done on your studies so far. You should now have a good understanding on topic 1 introduction to financial service industry. Remember you have your made easy revision book to support your studies. Next steps. Why not try the topic quiz on the VLE to reflect on your understanding of introduction to financial service industry. Once you feel ready, Move on to topic 2 and continue your studies.